We have to get that information out of Angel Moran as soon as possible. We're working on it. Now, you know that I do have a special interest in this case. I know. Now, I will get Moran to talk. Don't worry about that. Oh, perhaps I should get back to headquarters, you no, know? No, no, Chief, Chief, listen now. This is a big night for you. Look, we are very proud of you, Mr. Vane. The police can use every pat on the back that they can get. Tonight is your night. Oh, thank you. Yes, I really do have to go to this ball. But you must keep in touch with me. I, I will. Promise? I will, I promise. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, dear. Mm. What are you doing? I'm practicing. What, what, what are you practicing for? Throwing flowers, you know, for Felicia's wedding. Oh, right, a flower girl. Yep, that's me. Um, okay, offer you a little bit of advice. Maybe you, um, you actually, you shouldn't really sort of like hurl the flowers at the people. I mean, like, you know, give them black eyes and things. You just toss them lightly, gently. That? Yeah, like, like that, yeah. Just... I think I could do that. You think you could do that? Good. Isn't it time for you to get all dressed up for the party tonight? Yes, it is, and I haven't decided what I'm going to wear yet. You looked awfully pretty in that dress when you went dancing with Buzz that night. I did? Maybe mm -hmm. I should wear that dress then. Well, you could save that one for another date with Buzz, and you can wear something else pretty tonight. All right. If that's the way you feel, I won't wear that dress. I'll wear something else. I'll wear my other dress. All right? Mommy? Yes, darling. Is Buzz going to be all right? Yes, sweetheart. He's going to be fine. Because there's lots of wonderful doctors making sure of that. And now my job is to find the horrible men who did this to Buzz and make them pay for it. Just a minute! Is this vision of loveliness before me? Like it? Oh, why do I like it? I think it is absolutely exquisite. How is my favorite goddaughter tonight, huh? Favorite? Do I have more than one? Well, sweetheart, even if I did, you would still be my favorite goddaughter. Where's your mommy? She's getting all dressed. She's going to look more beautiful than ever. That is impossible. Oh, I almost forgot. What? I have a surprise for you. You do? Yes. <laughs> I think this might be it. Oh, okay. Watch yourself. Minute. For five minutes. <laughs> hello, this is it. Oh, well, hello, Mr. Darnley. Are Monica. you surprised? Uh, yes, honey, I am surprised. I <laughs> thought you would be. Don't tell me I am going to be taking two beautiful women to that policeman's ball tonight, hmm? Yep. Want to know how it happened? Yes, I want to know how it happened. Well, I knew Dr. Quartermain didn't have a date tonight. I guess her husband's busy or something. Or something. So, I wanted to get permission to call Dr. Quartermain. I think, you know, we could call her Monica from now on. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> to call her and ask her to come over here. And so you and Monica and my mommy could all go together. Splendid idea. Yes, and of course I could not say no to Robin. Of course you couldn't. And now we have the prince taking two Cinderella's to the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder which one the shoe will fit. I'll check that out at midnight. <laughs> uh, Robin, will you just come help me with the zip, please? Be right there. Okay. Excuse me, I'm needed. <laughs> <laughs> be careful, sweetheart. Please be careful. Be okay. careful. Don't fall. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Mm. Mm-hmm. Careful now. We don't want to shatter all of Robin's illusions. All right. I think we're going to have some fun tonight. I know we're going to have some fun tonight. I even decided that I am going to control my temper as far as Alan's concerned. Mm, and I can hardly wait to see him silently fume when I walk in with you and Anne on my arm. Oh, I hear them. Oh. Hello. Oh, look. Oh, Anne, that dress is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I love your hair like that. Oh, thank Gorgeous. you. We can leave just as soon as my babysitter gets here, but I've just got time to make one phone call. Is that uh, police business? Of course, yes. I'm just checking in to speak to Captain Lewis. Does he know where you're going to be tonight? Oh, yes. Well, why don't you have him check in with you if it's important? Well, he might have a lead on what happened to Buzz. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that I know exactly what Buzz would say if he were here tonight. 
What? He would say that you should wind up the uh, brownstone murder case before you jump into something else, and tonight you personally do that, so you're off duty, Chief. Shall we? Much well. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Oh, somebody help me oh, with that. Oh. It's not this, it's that. Dear, if you don't swallow that soon, you'll be in trouble. There are two things in life I can't swallow, and they're both over there. Oh, good evening, everyone. Uh, two white wines, buy kind of rocks, please. I must be the only person who has a congratulations in newlyweds. Congratulations. Oh, yes, my best of both. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes, thank you so much. Big night for you, Anna. Yes, I'm really nervous. Really, you're surrounded by all your friends, so don't worry. And you have lots of them now. Oh, even the mirrors. Oh, hello. Yeah, it has a little nice smile. I wish I'd used it more often. Let's talk to you for a minute, Monica. What? Very you think Sean's fooling me by walking in here with you and Anna? Do you think you could manage not to be quite such a bore this evening? You don't really think he's pulling the wool over my eyes, do you? I see you cannot manage that. No, I want to. Evening. You think so? I don't want to seem to talk to you for a minute I was just telling Monica that... I would rather not hear it again, Alan. Yeah. Shall we? I'd love to. <clears throat> do you think we could manage a dance? through some pretty harrowing experiences, but I really learned you just have to live life every moment. If you don't, you just dry up inside. Does that suggest to you that we should dance <laughs> at least once? Um, does it? You bet. Yes, it does. Um, you can go ahead and you'll have some fun. Yeah. Go on. Well, all right. <clears throat> Mr. Bain? Yes. I'm going to give you this. What is this? Uh, oh, my goodness. It's Heather. Is that what it is? <laughs> Who gave this to you? The gentleman wouldn't give me his name, but he did say they're for you. Thank you. Anna, congratulations. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. What have you... Oh. What are these, special flowers? Uh, yes, it, it's a sprig of heather. It really reminds me of when I was a child. Oh, well, who gave it to you? I don't know his name, but he's right over there. Oh, he's gone. Hmm. <laughs> well, did you meet him here tonight? No, no, I, I, I haven't met him. <laughs> he didn't say anything when he gave you the flower? No. He, he sent a waiter over here, and it was all wrapped up. And, uh -huh. and earlier on, I dropped my scarf stop for me and now he's gone he's not here at all well, i didn't see him anywhere no I, I, hmm. that's kind of intriguing <laughs> yes yes he is um how's tony well he's fine he stopped off in the hospital and wants to go check up on by I'll send him my lunch i will it's good to see you did not have a little sprig of heather when you left the house no 
I didn't. Actually, somebody gave it to me, and I, I don't know whose name it is. Oh. Secret admirer. Well, I'm not sure about the admiration, but it's a certain secret. Ah, mystery lovers. Yes. It's very handsome, too. Oh, well, well, then you do know him. No, no, I don't. I don't know his name. I, I don't even know where he is right now. Well, I'd better keep an eye out for this guy, just to make sure his intentions are wrong. Well, you know, the awful thing is, I, I'm not sure whether I do know him, you see, and I just can't remember what his name is. You probably arrested him once. Oh, sure, Sean, Sean. I didn't arrest him. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, so this is a policeman's ball, and has to be on the up and up. Well, that's probably. He's uh, more than likely an out-of-town cop. Oh, I should ask him. Oh, thank you. Oh, anybody mind if I have a mushroom? Alan, will you stop following me, please? Um, actually, I'm just going to go and, and, and talk to Jenny for a second. I know. Yes. Well, I guess, and I wonder if it's until I get custody of both those children, you're going to see a lot of me. Dance, Monica? I would love to, Sean. Thank you. Ask you to join us, Alan. I think it would look a little long. Hi. Hi. Congratulations on your big night. Oh, thank you very much. Isn't it fun to get dressed up once in a while? It is fun. I love doing it. You look beautiful, and I think the gentlemen look wonderful in black ties. Well, I think the ladies look just gorgeous. Monica, she looks fantastic. They look like they're having a good time. Say, where's Patrick? Oh, well, um, <laughs> I'm sharing him with Tanya because Tony, Tony's still at the Oh, that sounds exciting. Here you are. Um, that's wine, Bobby. No, my dear, that's apple juice. Oh, <laughs> thank you. All right, all right. Now, this is your big night out for change, all right? You don't have to be hovering over here. Who's hovering? Nice. Are you hovering? No. I'm not hovering. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Have I congratulated you yet tonight on your accommodation? No, you haven't, but don't congratulate me too quickly no. because I've still got to say my speech and I'm probably going to dry up. Oh. I'll never get the wood in here. <laughs> my money's on you, kid. Mine too. Thank you. Listen, would you make them go out there and dance? I've got to put on my makeup. Absolutely. Good. Go and dance. Twist my arm. Okay. Oh, come on. I take those back to the This is very romantic music. Come here. Well, I have the pleasure of this dance, Mr. Wood. Very Judging by your accent, so are you. And you're looking for a, a new one? I found mine. What about you? Perhaps. Perhaps tonight I have. far away I was uh, I was gathering heather I didn't know it grew around here <laughs> you'd be surprised you know it's almost time for the awards presentation and I have been looking forward to that oh, all uh, evening are you ready yes as ready as I'm ever going to be let's go I really have to say a speech oh. I mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Have you two been? Yeah. Great. Uh, playing with your nap. Oh, that's okay. The champagne will be waiting for you. Thank you.
thank you. I know this applause is for Anna Dubay, who stands here beside you. All right, all right. That tells me to keep my remarks at a minimum. And Mr. Vane has also asked me to keep my compliments at a minimum, too. Anna, Port Charles owes you a great deal. And this simple plaque is but a small token of our respect and appreciation for a job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. District Attorney, for being here. I'm really very grateful for this, uh, this sign that uh, Port Charles has accepted me. I, I share this with a great many people who have helped me. The police, of which I am a proud member, always need your help and your cooperation. Crime breeds suffering, and we must all work together to relieve that suffering as much as possible. We, we should all live together as friends also. And uh, sometimes those, those friendships are severely tested. But we all have the ability to forgive and to love again. And uh, this has been clearly demonstrated by my friends here tonight. I'm very grateful and um, very touched. Thank you very much. While I was interrogating Mr. Angel Moran, this high-priced lawyer came in and started making a lot of noise about getting Angel out on bail. An expensive lawyer. Oh, yeah. I can smell him a mile away. But Angel Moran's not the sort that can afford an expensive lawyer. No, he's not, but he's got a rich friend. Oh, he does. Who is it? Me. You? To be sure. Who are you? Duke Lavery. Duke Lavery? I was just getting to that, Chief. Oh, yes. I know the name. I know the name, and I know a little bit about the person. I know a lot more about you, Mr. Vane. I liked your speech this evening, by the way. Thank you. Do you know that there is a club on the waterfront called Duke's. High on it? Do you? Really? Well, that is high on my list of places to investigate. Oh, I do come as a guest sometime, Mr. Vane, but not with a warrant. And there'll always be a sprig of hair there at your table. Well, I think at the moment we really ought to concentrate on your connection with our prisoner, Angel Moran. You know, friendship is a, a weakness of mine. Angel is a friend of yours? Since my time on the New York City docks. Oh, really? Now, with that accent, I do find that rather hard to believe. Oh, I never lost my accent, even when I came to America from Scotland. And your accent? At the moment, the subject is Angel Moran. Do you know that the man is a crook? No, Angel just has a little proclivity for danger that most spirited men have. And you? What about you, Mr. Labour? Chief, could I interrupt here? Yes, of course. I have some paperwork for Mr. Lavery to fill out. There's no way to avoid that, I suppose. I'm afraid not. Perhaps you could help. I really don't think so. Mr. Lavery, I'll help you. Of course. Thank you. Angel's being brought up from his holding cell. 
I didn't know you'd still be here, Mr. Vane. I was just checking some things in my office. All work? Sometimes, yes. Mm, pity. Mr. Lavery. It could be Duke, you know. I really think I should warn you that if Mr. Moran does anything else spirited, I'm going to lock him up and throw away the key. Oh, well, that is to the point. Yes, it's meant to be. It was a great pleasure meeting you this evening, Mr. Vane. After what I've said. Oh, a little bit of conflict never hurts a relationship. Yes, well, there's going to be... If Angel Moran so much as Jay walks... Good night, Mr. Lavery. Oh, good night, Mr. Vane. Mr. Lavery, you can pick up your friend now. I promise you a drink, Mr. Vane. It's very late. But never too late, I hope. I... I happen to think that it is. I have a problem, Mr. Vane, and I think you can help me. I doubt it. You see, I'm a man who cannot rest until he has fulfilled the promise he made earlier in the day. Well, that's very commendable. However, I I'm not interested. I promise you a drink earlier. No, I think we should have that drink, and then I will leave quietly. Oh, it's very well chill, don't worry. It took a certain amount of timing. Mr. Lavery, I really... Please call me Duke. After all, we have danced. Briefly. Oh, we should take care of that too, I think. Mr. Lavery, what I wanted to say is that at this hour of night, I'm really not interested in whatever your personal idiosyncrasies might be. Well, perhaps after we get to know one another a little better, you will. But I think that we've got off to a very bad start. Well, that's not bad. Only one place to go from there, and that is up. I'm not so sure about that. Oh, you'll see. Mr. Lavery, if you think that you can turn up on my doorstep at this hour of the night and expect me to welcome you into my home, then I'm you really... I'm quite mistaken. Yes, you are quite mistaken. Oh, but you see, I'm not mistaken, Mr. Vane. I didn't think this was going to be easy. I knew it was going to take some doing. Well, you're not doing it. This is very pleasant here, you know. It's warm. It's comfortable. Tasteful. <sighs> Thank you. Well, what did you expect? An interrogation room? Mm -mm. I didn't expect an interrogation room. I expected what I found. I didn't come calling on a cop, Mr. Vane. I came calling on a beautiful woman. Now. Be kind. Have one sip at least. It's very good. Uh, things are looking up. Uh, I'm complimenting the wine, Mr. Lavery, the wine. Try Duke on for size. Don't underestimate me. Oh, never. I am a cop, remember? Aren't there times when you just want to put your badge away? Yes, but I always put it where I can find it. And aren't there times when you just feel like a woman? Yes, the same way that a male cop sometimes feels, just like being an ordinary man. You really are on very thin ice here, Mr. Lavery, Duke, whatever you want to be called. Uh -uh. I think I am. Well, good. I'm glad you think so. Don't you like to know that I am flexible? Yes, it helps. Hmm. That's a major step forward. But I don't know where we're going. Well, adventures often start that way. I very rarely have time for adventure. That's why you must seize the moment. Now, if there was music... Ah, there is music. Mr. Lavery, please. Oh, what lovely music. What were you doing when you started listening to this? Well, I think I was doing the washing up. 
Well, now you have nothing mundane to do. Well, actually, yes, I quite like to go to sleep. Sleep? Yes. You're too young to need much sleep, Mr. Vane. I don't see why we don't just round out a perfect evening by finishing the dance we started earlier. Mr. Avery, I really... I... I feel very odd about this, all of this. That's okay. Odd feelings are sometimes the best kind, you know. I'm not sure. We'll see. I know you, Anna Devane. lived there for a while. I started working on the dogs. Yeah, I lived there for a while, too. I, I was a child there, real young. God, it is one grim city. Absolutely. You know about the Beatles came from there. That's true. They're not grim at all. In fact, they're one of my favorites. I like them. Yeah. So, um... So you were working on the dogs, then? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, um... You know, it's, it's funny, really. We, we're only just beginning now to get around to facts about each other. Oh, I disagree. I think, uh... I think we know lots of facts about each other. Well, um, likes and dislikes, maybe. I think that's important. I mean, for example, I wouldn't ask you out for dinner and take you to a Hungarian restaurant. And I wouldn't ask you out for dinner and take you to a Mexican restaurant. Oh, why am I banned? Oh. Once. Once. <laughs> well, um... Actually, yes, it's true. We have learned a little bit about each other. I, um, sorry that you don't like Charles Dickens. I like Charles Dickens. I just prefer Thomas Hardy. Hmm. Why, um, don't we concentrate on some more pertinent questions? I think everything we've talked about so far has been pertinent, don't you? Well, actually, no. I, I was thinking more about your acquaintance, uh, Angel Moran. Friend, not acquaintance. I'm sorry to hear that. It takes me a long time to call a man a friend, Anna. And when he is a friend, I feel as if I have to stand by him. There are things about Angel you might like. I don't think so. I mean, I can't imagine him mixing with a cop. Don't be too sure. He's used to them. But what about you, Anna? What little surprises did life have for you? Surprises? Do I detect a veil across your eyes? No, not at all. I'm just wondering what you mean by surprises. Mommy, how come you're up so early? What are you doing up at this time of night, darling? I'm always up at this time. Uh, but darling, it's... Like for breakfast? In the middle of the night? It's morning, Mommy, and here's your morning kiss. Oh, uh, hi, darling. Um... Oh, where did the time go? Hello there. Hello. Um... This is my daughter, Robin. Robin, this is Mr. Duke Lavery. How do you do? Very well, thank you. How do you do? Very well. But I don't know what's going on. Let me explain. Last night, Mr. Duke Lavery came round with uh, some champagne, and we, we've we been talking all night, and the time just flew by. No kidding. No kidding. You must have a lot to talk about that's interesting. Oh, yeah, and we have a lot more to talk about that's just as interesting. You have an accent, almost like my daddy's. Hmm, I'm learning more and more. I like it. I'm doing well, don't you think? Very. But I'm hungry. All right, sweetheart, I'll fix you your breakfast. Will you excuse us? I, I'm very good at squeezing oranges and uh, making scrambled eggs. And what I wouldn't give for a kipper to go with it. Well, kipper, it so happens that... You don't. We do. Have a kipper, or two. Well, if the kitchen's through there, perhaps I'll go start. Really, I'd rather you didn't. I'd rather... Mommy, let him. If he's good, we can invite him over again for breakfast. Oh, boy. I gotta put everything into this breakfast, huh? Excuse me. You like him, don't you? 
very charming. That's all. Do you think he could be another possible godfather for me? Oh, darling. I like the way he talks. Don't you think you have enough? I, I really think we ought to talk about this a little bit more, okay? He talks a little like hey. Daddy. Yes. I can't find a can opener. I'll get it for you. She knows. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. You didn't tell me you were married. Well, I'm divorced, actually. Surprises. Divorced? Yes. From her father. Who is? Robert Scorpio. He's a um, former police commissioner of Fort Charles. <laughs> I'm uh, making a complete check on Duke Lavery's background. May I ask why the special interest chief? Well, I've been meaning to get some information on um, the waterfront businesses, and now that this Brownstone murder case is over, I think it's a perfect time for me to find out more about the city, the people in it. Not a bad idea. Yes. But I'm mainly interested in Duke Lavery, you know, the man and his club. Oh, I would love to know his connection with Angel. I would too. Absolutely. Oh, this is going to take a while, so... Oh, well, look, uh, I think he's clear on the Fort Charles police files, but why don't I go check again? All right, that's a good idea. Thank you. Oops. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anna Devane's expecting us? Oh, yeah, come on right in. Hi. Oh, yeah. hi. Oh, hello. Uh, you look kind of surprised. You weren't expecting us? Yes, um, I was. I, I was working. The bridesmaids are thinking of giving Felicia a shower, but we just can't decide where. A shower? Anna, is something wrong? No. No, I, I've just had too much champagne and too mm, little sleep, sorry. I'm afraid. That's how it is. <laughs> that was some bash last night, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry? Oh. I mean, the award you were given, Chief Devane, was very inspiring. At Eastman, that's right. You know, if you, if you want to hold the shower at my apartment, you're more than welcome. Oh, perfection. Because I figured if we held it at the Brownstone, she'd find out about it immediately, so... <gasps> Secondly, we were thinking of having just women. Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so, sir, ma'am, ma'am, in this case, we were also thinking of making it a lingerie shower. Yes, I think Felicia would like that. You know, I just realized something. You what? haven't heard about Buzz yet. No, I haven't. What about him? Buzz was operated on last night by Tony, Rick, and Yank. I didn't know about that. How is he? He, he came through the surgery all right. He's in stable condition. He had a massive infection around the steel plate in his head. Oh my God, I didn't know. I've got to get into general's work. Can we finish this discussion another time? Well, of course, yeah. I'll call you, all right? Okay. Or if you call me yes, now. Yes, I'll, I'll call you. Okay. okay. Um, we were just leaving. Sorry, yeah. Captain. Yes. I, I've got to get over to General Hospital straight away, all right? Oh, well, listen, I only came back to tell you that there's absolutely nothing on Duke Lavery on the Port Charles TV's files. Okay, well, you just keep looking, because I've got to go over to General Hospital. Anything you can find on You got it. Morning, Duke. Morning, Angel, old boy. Where you been all night? I'm taking care of some unfinished business. That could mean anything. Yeah, so it could. Listen, Duke, I want to thank you again for bailing me out of jail last night. That Anna Devane, chief of police, she had it in mind to keep me there for good. I do believe she has it in for you. Why me? I'm just a run-of-the-mill strong arm. Why me? I don't know yet. Anyway, I got breakfast waiting for you. I've had breakfast, thank you. Wait a minute. There is one thing you can do for me. Name it. Give me all the information you can on Anna Devane. What? Didn't you hear me? Oh, yes, I heard you. I heard you, Duke. And I'm all for it. Except that word I get from the waterfront is as she's clean. Straight as an arrow. Not to mention tough. Oh, I believe she's all these things and more. But more. That's why I want to know about her. You get me all the information you can. You understand? That's going to take some deep digging. Well, that's what I pay you for, isn't it? One of the things, anyway. You got it. I didn't know we had to have another operation. Well, we thought it was best to hold off telling you anything until we had good news. Well, do you have any good news? Well, his vital signs are good. His condition is stable. He was on the operating table a long, long time, though. Yeah. Well, I was at a ball enjoying myself. Anna, you had to be there for your award. 
And if Buzz had had anything to do with it, he would have told you to go and stay. Well, I would have given him an argument. Come on, Anna. Buzz wanted you to have that award. He was very proud of you. He never thinks about himself. Tony. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's my imagination, but these bandages look like they've been put on differently. As a matter of fact, I haven't explained that to anybody yet. Why'd you do that? The different bandage. Uh, I didn't want to alarm you, but it was impossible to put Buzz's steel plate back in right away. No, why? no. Wait a second. Don't tell me something no, else no, is wrong. No, no, no. Now, listen, that's why I didn't tell you. There's nothing wrong. It's just that I want time for that bone area to heal. We have to be absolutely certain that he's free of infection because we can't put Buzz through that again. Tell me one thing. Is he going to be 100%? He's going to be okay. He's just going to be in General Hospital for a while. Oh, that's all right. We're all going to look after him. It's going to be a fairly long recuperative period. He's going to require quite a bit of rest and care before he can ever go back to work. Well, he'll get it. I'll be there for you, Buzz. Same way you were there for me. You know, you've got to get better. For Robin and me. Do you hear me? There's a police rundown on all the night spots, the clubs, bars, dives on the Fort Charles waterfront. Now, you know that I'm most interested in the nightclub called Duke's. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you, there's nothing on the Duke himself. I know. Even my WSB report said that he's never been convicted of a crime. However, I don't know whether you noticed, but there was a sub-note from the New York City police that did say that they'd been interested in the man for the past few years. I read that. I know. Well, you see, I tend to agree with the New York City police because I find the man rather interesting myself. Uh, Mr. Mayor Morgan. Come in. Hello. Captain yeah, Lewis. Hello. Hello, Keith. Hi. Hello. I'm glad you had a few minutes for this talk. I didn't get a chance to get around to it last night at the ball. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I have just come from the city council meeting, and funds have been approved for the waterfront revitalization project. Congratulations, sir. It's been an uphill battle, but I finally got it in my pocket. Oh, good, good, good. And now that your attention is off the brownstone case, mm -hmm. this is top priority. As you know, the primary goal of my administration is to clean up the waterfront and turn it into a tourist attraction. It just so happens that you have absolutely perfect timing. What do you mean? Well, um, the captain and myself have put together a file of all the waterfront businesses, you see. And I even contacted my WSB branches, and they managed to give me some extra information on all various operations. Well, excellent. Uh, do you think that we're going to have any trouble cleaning out the criminal element on the waterfront? There will be a fight. You can count on that. However, I won't rest until the place is clean. Well, you know, Robert Scorpio tried that, and he failed. Robert never failed. He just didn't get the backup that he needed. However, we have it now. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. What is this? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, can you believe that? Uh, uh, where do you want me to put these? Oh, I don't know. Just put it anywhere. No, I will take take it away with you. I don't want another one of those things. And just wait a second. You can take it down the picture with you. What, what, but, but everything's paid for. Yes, I don't care. Just take it, all of it. What? Take it out. But, I want you to take it out, please. But, yes, out. And you can take this one, too. This one. Take it out. Okay. Yes, come in. Uh, I just felt the earth move. Something wrong? No. Nothing, there's nothing, it's not personally, it's something with me, that's all. Well, I've been down in supplies, filling out some paperwork for my gun and my badge. Thought I'd come by and see how you were doing after seeing Buzz. I've got the utmost faith in Tony. I'm holding on to that. Do you want to sit down? Sure. Is there, uh, something going on here? Well, yes. Actually, the Mayor Morgan came by earlier, a little while ago. Don't tell me he's... 
changing his mind after all his kind words last night and turning on you. No, he's not, not yet. However, the council have voted his new uh, project for revitalizing the waterfront. He wants to clean it up. He wants it to be colorful, but he wants it to be free from crime. I see. Get rid of some places and keep some places. Yeah. Well, we know the waterfront water, and there's some nice places, and there's some bad places. Yes. How do we tell the good places from the bad? few loose ends before I hit the streets with Frisco. I wish I understood. Well, there's nothing to understand. I promised Robert I'd help Frisco, and I figured this was the no, best no, no, way. No, 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 no. I, I'm not thinking about Frisco. It's uh, someone else. Oh? Well, uh, would you uh, like to tell me what's on your mind? Um, it's, it's uh, Duke Lavery. I can't seem to make any sense of the man. Uh, I don't know him, but uh, if I were you, I'd stay clear of him. Oh, believe me, I've tried. However, he won't afford me that luxury. Oh? These arrived from him this morning. Well, nobody can say he doesn't have style. You've not to mention a very presumptuous nature. He has no reason to send me flowers. I hardly know the man. Well, my guess is that uh, he'd like to know you a little better. Well, I don't know why. We have nothing in common. Well, did you uh, come up with any information on Lavery? No, not yet. Um, However, I did put in a request through the WSB, so we should be getting something soon. Well, maybe you'll come up clean and you have nothing to worry about. Yes, nothing but an overly ardent suitor. <laughs> Worst things have happened to women. I suppose so. Anna, I uh, wanted to talk to you about the crime problem on the waterfront. Anna, the waterfront crime problem? Yes, that's right. You promised Mayor Morgan we were going to try and clean it up. Mm. Yes? There's someone here to see you, Chief. A Jimmy Lee Holt. He says it's important. Send him in right away. Yes, come in. Anna. What is it? Is it us? No, no, he's fine. As a matter of fact, I saw him at lunch. He's feeling real feisty after the operation. Oh, good, good, because I'm going to go and see him after work. All right, what can I do for you? Look, I, I need your help. It's really not for me. It's, it's for Buzz. Well, you know how I feel about him. I'll do anything I can. I want you to help me find his daughter. His daughter? Huh? I didn't know you had any children. <laughs> Neither did I. What gave you this idea? Well, at first it was something he said when he was groggy. He kept mentioning the name Sandy over and over again. Um, the way he said it made me believe that, that it was his daughter. I questioned him about it, and he admitted it. Well, he loves children. I, I mean, I'd be so surprised to find out that he was estranged from his own daughter. Yeah, well, there's a lot about this man we don't know, Anna. Yeah. Look, I was wondering, maybe you could put her name into your WSB computer, see what you can come up with. Yes, of course, absolutely. I just hope the boss doesn't mind us poking through his private life. Look, I believe that uh, he needs his family and his friends. I, I know that having his daughter here will give him comfort while he's recuperating. Yes. Well, you know, I'm very close to him, but I'd love to think that he had his own family. Anna, Buzz is very vulnerable right now. I know he's got us, but by having his daughter here, I think it'll be another person who'll give him strength and support. I don't know anybody that couldn't use another friend. Hey, oh, take a break. That's one of the benefits of our union. Uh, yeah, look, I've got to make a phone call. I'll meet you in a minute, all right? All right, we'll be at the donut shop down the street. You got it. I'd like to speak to Anna Devane, please. Tell her it's Jimmy Lee Holt. No, no, it's personal. Okay, I'll wait. Hello, Jimmy Lee. Is it Buzz? No, no, Anna. Buzz is fine. Actually, this has to do with Sean. I want you to bring a couple of your cops down to his warehouse. For what reason? Well, I have reason to believe that he's illegally importing goods into this country. 
That's a very serious charge, Jimmy Lee. I don't think that Sean will be involved with something like that. Look, Anna, you know as well as I do that Sean has been on the wrong side of the law before. Yes, but I just hope that you're wrong about this. Then you're going to come down. I'll be there as soon as I can. Okay. I'll wait. Come on in. Oh, Mr. Carson, please come in. Take my coffee with cream and pouring. You weren't invited here for coffee. We want some answers. Are you ready to tell us about the beating you took? What beating? I, I told you. I'm a clumsy sort of guy. Oh, the clumsy sort of guy that just happens to walk into closed fists. Are you ready to press charges against Angel Moran? The guy I was rumbling with only looked like Angel. I mean, it's a pretty common look these days. Yeah, if you've seen one river rat, you've seen them all. Sorry to disappoint you, Chiefs. This isn't going the way we planned. Get him out of here. All right, come on, let's go. Get him out of here. That guy is lying through his teeth. I know. Well, we both know that Angel Moran is responsible for this beating up. Well, I think somebody got to him. Well, I think you're right. Damn. Oh. I wanted that to lead us to the guys who beat up Bass. Now well, maybe we'll come up with something when I hit the streets with Frisco. I hope so. I'm going to miss you here at headquarters. I know that you promised Robert that you would do this, but I just hope it's not a long assignment. As soon as I wear out my first pair of shoes, I'll be back at my desk, I promise. Oh, I suppose we, we, we have to drop our charges against Angel Moran, yeah, don't we? At least until we come up with something that we can make stick. See ya. Oh, dear. Oh, look. Why don't you come in? Mr. Levy, what are you doing here? I'm sorry, Anna. I tried to talk them out of it. Talk them out of what? I'm sorry for the intrusion, Chief Devane. I'm Harry Carlton. I'm representing Angel Moran. He's suing you for false arrest. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There is no reason for a lawsuit. My client has been publicly humiliated for no apparent reason. Now, someone has to pay for that. We've already decided to drop the charges. Mr. Moran can go pick up his bail money and go back to doing whatever it is he does. That's easy for you to say. I'm sure Chief Devane is sorry for acting so rashly. She just made a bad decision. So easy to make these days. That's not enough. We as citizens can't allow this sort of travesty to continue. A fine, upstanding person like Mr. Moran is hauled into jail like some sort of common criminal. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? We only brought him in for questioning. His civil rights were never at question. We'll let a jury decide that. But I know Chief Devane is sorry for her mistakes. I also know she would like to apologize. I mean, after all, such an apology could save the city a great deal of embarrassment, not to mention a messy lawsuit. Go ahead, Chief. Apologize. I'm... Uh, I'm very sorry for whatever it is you think I did. Very nicely put. Wouldn't you say, gentlemen? Yeah. Well, it, uh, it wasn't much. But I guess it's better than having my good name dragged through the courts. I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Moran. You had a very good case. But now that we've got that behind us, let's go outside and see if we can arrange for you to get a refund on your bail money. Come on. You gentlemen go on ahead. I'll catch up with you. Okay. Hello, radio. I'm sorry you don't like flowers. Oh, I love flowers. I just can't accept them from you. Oh, that's too bad. You better get used to it, because I intend to keep sending them. You are infuriating. That's good. I like to bring out the passion in a woman. And by the way, I know how sorry you were about breaking the last one. All this happiness has made me sort of hungry. Oh. Huh. Do you mind holding off long enough just while I look at the menu? Yes, I do mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honey, isn't that the 
man we saw at the policeman's mall? Yeah, it is. Duke Lavery, that's his name. He got Angel Moran out of jail. Angel, he's the one that you and Sam caught at the crap game, right? Yeah, a lot of good it did. He was out like that. <sighs> Something about this guy that I don't trust. Duke Lavery. Hope Anna keeps an eye on him. Okay. I waited long enough. Why the hell are you being so friendly with a lady cop? Anna Vivi? Yeah, there's no reason. She's just another pretty face. Ah. starting to look alike to me. I know. I'm trying to use the process of elimination. However, I haven't eliminated a thing. They're all very pretty. Well, I must say, I'm partial to these hot pinks here. What do you think? Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Well, well I was, but now I'm beginning to think along the lines of blues. I will go for any color that doesn't resemble Police Academy blue. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't blame you. <laughs> Having trouble making up your oh, mind? Yes. I think we are. Yes. Is it a formal or informal wedding? No, yeah, it's formal. formal. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it formal, would you, Felicia? No, I don't think I would. Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, well, I only said it was formal, you know, because the Courtenay's Mansion never came. I mean, that's very traditional. Yeah, I mean, well, we're not, we decided not to have it there. Oh. It's a gorgeous place, but, and I thanked Monica for letting us use it, but Frisco and I just felt that our friends wouldn't be comfortable there. It's formal, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind stiff, of... stiff, yeah. Stiff? Yeah, formal and stiff. Don't tell anybody I, don't I tell so. said that. No, no. It's not for oh, well. oh. Oh. Well, oh. Oh, they're all so beautiful. Oh, really? really? I, not too formal, right? Right. Oh, okay. I could go out dancing in this one again. Yeah, use well, it again. The question is, which one looks best with my dress? You're right. right. Well, you know, I thought this one would sort of go with the old-fashioned lace. And, and I mm -hmm. thought that, that this one would really complement your gown a lot. Yeah. Well, out. whichever one you want. Well, it's also a question of sizes and what they have in stock, too. Oh. I'm going to take a look again. Oh. I can't let this drag out much longer. Absolutely. We've got to get out of here. I know, I know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I know. Oh, I could pretend that I'm sick. Or I could faint. I'll actually no, let me no, on the you'd floor. You'd never get rid never. of her then. She'd worry about your pregnancy, take you home and call the oh, doctor. Oh, right, right. No, here she comes with more dresses. Oh, no. Look, We're I really never can't stay around for this lingerie selection. I've got to go to General Hospital. That's mm. it. That's a perfect excuse. If you tell her we have to leave, then she'll make a decision. Good idea. Yeah. Felicia, I can't stay. It's police business, you know. I, I'm going to go with whatever you decide, whatever your decision is. Well, no, that wouldn't be fair to you, though. I don't mind. Whatever you decide. Anna, Felicia's right. Listen, you got to be in on the decision-making. No. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, <clears throat> oh, let's just decide right now. Okay. Okay, it's right between now. these three dresses or among these three dresses, and just use your imagination and think about which one is going to look good with the antique lace and the mantilla. Right. You know, I have to say... I don't think, I think this is out. Oh. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, I, <laughs> no I problem. Know. She's a good sport. She doesn't mind. <laughs> okay, now what did choose between okay. these two? Yeah, okay. Is. Well, which one do you really like? The truth? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> the truth will set you free. Um. <laughs> Well, all, all right. All, I, I think it's Tanya's. I'm, all right. That's yeah? perfect. Okay. It's, it's lovely. lovely. It's beautiful. It is. It is. Wonderful. Did the sales lady say that they have other sizes and colors? Yeah, that's what she said. Oh, I heard her. Okay. Well, then it's all have settled. we made a decision? Well, yes, yes. We, yes. This oh, one we here. want this one. I'll right write up the order. Okay, okay. okay. good. Six. Felicia, okay. as long as you're here, why don't you uh, look for your trousseau? Yes. Trousseau. Good idea. Uh -huh. For the honeymoon. Well, I'm not going on anymore. First of all, I'm going on tonight. I'm going anywhere. Well, well, yeah, I know that, but uh, but that's just a technicality. Uh, the first week or two after your wedding is a honeymoon. Week or two? I should hope the honeymoon lasts forever. Well, yeah, that's what I meant, forever. <laughs> I'd be glad to help you. We have some marvelous outfits. There's a dress over there that was just made for you. I know. <laughs> Better than Felicia, shall we? Yeah. Oh, oh, my. oh my. How are you doing, ladies? I just got Felicia going over to the Trousseau department. Oh, I hope she stays there. Amen. <laughs> Why? Is she giving you a hard time? No, 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 no. It's just that we want her out here so we can get some lingerie for the party we're throwing for. Well, I know a place where you can find very sexy lingerie, and the price is right. Where? where? The boutique at the spa. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amy, listen to me. Every nurse has to help with drug inventory once in a while, okay? I know that. I've had to do it before. And I also know I'm going to get stuck here all night long. Dr. 
What's happened to Jimmy Lee? I don't know, but it looks like we're going to find out. Wow, what happened to you? Amy, I don't want to talk about it. Not to you and not to the police. Yeah, but Jimmy Lee, I think that... Anna, he said he doesn't want to discuss his injury. I know, but if he feels... Anna, I, I don't want to talk about it. All right, I, I've got some information for you. This involves you too, Tony. Have you got a second? <clears throat> now, Jimmy Lee asked me to get some information on Sandy Striker. The long-lost daughter. Yes, that's right. Now, I've got a computer printout here. The only Sandy Striker we could come up with is 19, and she lives in Chicago, right? This is her last known address, and here's her phone number. That's great. 19 years old, it figures out, Anna. And she lives in Chicago, which is close to Indiana. Right, and also, right here, you see her social security number? That, that checks in, too. Well, that's great. Now, uh, what should I do? Should I call her? Well, that's the point of the information, isn't it? Well, I'm just trying to figure out how to do it, Tony. I mean, a girl gets a call out of, out of nowhere about a father that she obviously hasn't seen in a long time. It might blow her away. Yeah, but I think you should t take that gamble, don't you? Anna. Anna, would you call her? No. You should call her, Jimmy Lee. If I call her, she'll get frightened because she'll think the police are involved. Nurse McManus, report to Dr. Azazi. Well, don't you think so? I don't have any answers. I have a lot of reservations about this, though, because I'm concerned about Buzz. Well, we all are. Tony, he's my best friend. Well, then do me a favor. Don't tell him about it yet, okay? I think he means business about that. Just don't tell him. Fine, I won't. I'm going to call Chicago, though. All right. Well, yeah. I didn't get through to her. I uh, called the number, was disconnected. Wasn't there a forwarding number? No, no, then I called the operator. They didn't have a new number, so I sent a telegram to the last known address. I hope that she gets it. I left two numbers, one here and right. one in my home, so. That's good. You could always leave a number. Oh, excuse okay. me, Mr. Holt, uh, Dr. Stryker is asking for you. No mention of Sandy. Not a word. Okay. I'm gonna go. Nurse Woodrow, please call the doctor's lounge. Anna? Yes? Well, I guess you didn't get the telegram, huh? You only sent it a couple of hours ago, Jimmy Lee. Oh. I guess I'm being a little anxious, huh? Yes, you are. Yeah. Selfishly, I'm sort of glad that we don't have any, have any information, because then when I go and see Bart, I don't have to lie. He doesn't know you've got anything to do with it, so he won't question you. Well, you, you never know. He might... I know he won't. Hello. Hi. What are you doing here, Precious? The babysitter drove me over here. I knew you were going to your bus. So you wanted to come see her too, did you? All right, we'll ask him that. Oh, excuse me. Would it be possible for Robin and I to go in and see Dr. Stryker? Oh, no, I'm sorry. He just fell asleep. Okay. Well, we'll wait. Do you want to wait with us? I wish you'd get out of this hospital and come home. I miss you too. Catch me up on your life. Well? I have a new godfather, Mr. Duke Glavery. You need someone to take my place while I'm in here. He doesn't really fill your place. Doesn't he? Well, he might fill it halfway. But Mr. Lavery and I don't know each other that well yet. Uh, you give it time. Doctors always say that. I think Mr. Lavery will. Mommy says he's a man who knows what he wants. What's taking your mother so long to get back in here? I don't know. I'll go see. Thank you. Long, but I was on the phone to my office. I see that Robin beat me here. Oh, but now you're all mine. I'm going to talk to you. Robin caught me up on her life. Did she tell you that she was going to Australia with Robert? That was her very first announcement. Where is she now? Oh, she's gone downstairs with Amy. She's going to have a soda. Oh. You look really good, Anna. There's something in your eyes, a, a glow. I haven't seen that there since Robert left. I guess I'm, I'm really happy to be back with Robin, you know. She missed me, and uh, I'm just so glad that that whole Kevin O'Connor nightmare is over. And the Brownstone murder case is solved. And I'm... I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you. 
How are you? You see that? My prognosis is about as shaky as that left hand. Tony and the staff, of course, refuse to tell me that. They keep insisting on encouraging me. Well, I'd listen to my doctors if I were you. But you're not a doctor, and I am. Well, you know what they say. Any doctor who insists on diagnosing his own case has got a fool for a patient. Maybe so. You're good medicine, huh? That promise you made carried me through two surgeries. That pledge that you'd never leave me. You remember? I meant it. Oh, yeah, I remember. Robin and I talked about it a lot when you were gone. I even allowed myself to believe that you loved me. Oh, Buzz. Anna, you're not in love with me. I know that. You don't have to say anything. What the hell man can dream, can't he? I think we'll always be friends, though. I'd never let you down. I know that. So, I'm letting you off the hook as of right now. It's late. I think maybe it's time for you to take Robin home. Yeah.